Welcome back to U.S. Cellular Field, where it is game time. Mark Burley will face this batting order brought to you by Southwest. Take a quick look at that lineup as we are ready to play ball. It is 7-11 and time for the first pitch. Tonight's game time start is presented by 7-11. Oh, thank heaven for 7-11. And now it's time for the play-by-play -play man, Ken the Hawk Harrelson. All right, DJ, thank you. First pitch of the ball game taken for a strike. Says Eric Cooper to Kenny Lofton. Lofton, one for five <laughs> last night, hitting a 255 on the season with a homer and five RBIs. And very quickly, the count nothing and two. Rangers with an 8-1 victory last night. Robinson Tejeda, well, he was he was stout. No doubt about it. That's up high. Rangers come in hitting at 234 as a club with a 4.74 team ERA. Short hop. And let's take a quick look at Mark Burley's numbers. This year he's made two starts one abbreviated one just made it past the first inning after a line shot in his forearm he had to leave in the second other outing seven innings gave up three runs take a look at his Rico defensive setup a couple of changes as Makoviak is out there and Uribe back out at shortstop Ian Kensler the second baseman just 24 years old one of the best looking young players in the game of baseball I am the center field Right towards the end of the bat, Kensler hitting a 359, seven homers, 13 RBIs on this young season. Three run homer last night. What a high school baseball team he was part of, Ian Kinsler, Brian Anderson, Scott Harrison. Oh, there's another big leaguer also that was on that team. I was talking to Brian Anderson about it. He said they didn't lose much. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Young takes first pitch strike. <laughs> one to one. Yeah. And here at beautiful U.S. Cellular Field, 330 down the left field line, 335 down the right field line, 375 in the gaps, and 400 straight away center. There's a strike in the count, one and two. Three innings for Burley and after a half inning of play. It's yes, the Rangers nothing and the good guys coming to bat. Welcome back. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Time to take a look at the Southwest batting order of the skipper, Oz again. First at Iguchi and Tomi will start it off. Konerko, Dai, Pierzynski following the first three. Creedy, Makoviak, and Uribe close it out. Kevin Millwood. Three starts, he's two and one, a 371 earned run average. Opponents are hitting 303 against him, but as you see, doesn't let him score a whole lot. And taking a look at his Rico defensive setup, Harrison, Lofton, Cruz are the outfielders. Blaylock, Young, Kinsler, Teixeira are the infielders. Laird, he throws well, he's behind the plate. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours, as DJ just told you, no way to give us some hits. They just don't cross home plate. So here's Darren. Now feel straight up, spread out. They're going to play everybody just <laughs> close to the same. Millwood, 32 year old right hander, 6'4. 230 pounds out of Gainesville, Georgia. The ball hit into left center field. Left in a long way to go. He will get there. What new? And take a quick look at our game conditions this evening. 41 degrees at game start. Humidity at 87. Forecast cloudy and cold. Umpires, Eric Cooper at home plate. James Hoy first. Mike Riley second. And Jeff Kellogg down at third base. Tadahito Aguchi. 0 for 3 last evening. 3 for 13 lifetime off Millwood. DJ, you were talking about in the open. Mark Burley felt like there was a curse on him in the first inning. <laughs> well, 
They kicked it for a night. Now look at this reaction. <laughs> Just happy to get that first one out of the way. And in quick, easy fashion. That was nice. That's, you know, that's the bonus. He didn't have to even work hard. 1-1 one, one pitch to Aguchi. Cross oh. coming hitting at 215 as a play. With a 3.92 ERA. A couple of finals in the American League, actually three. Kansas City came back and beat the Tigers 4-3 at Comerica. Oakland shut out the Angels 3-0 at the Coliseum. And down at Tropicana Field in St. Pete, Baltimore beat the D-Rays 6-4. Other action shows Boston at Toronto. Cleveland at New York, Minnesota, Seattle. Millwood against us has never beaten our club. He's 0 2 lifetime, but at 132 earned run average, that's more than that. How'd you, how'd you feel? You know, I pitched well against these guys. Can't get a win. Don't give up any runs. I don't know a couple of years ago, when he was at Cleveland, he was. He was just about as good as any right hander in this league, and they just couldn't score any runs for him. He yeah. wore that thing all year long. Yes, that's just uh, that's bad luck. And obviously, he wasn't real happy because he ended up here in Texas after pitching for Cleveland. Felt maybe he'd get a little better run support, huh? Jim Tomey, there are his numbers. He was our offense last night. Cranked down his third homer, a line shot right over the center field fence of Robinson Tejeda. Millwood was 16 and 12 last season. Jimmy last night, contact. Tied for 24th all time now on the home run list with Stargell and Musial. One and one to count. Feels slightly to the left as that is top foul. Well, you know, when a club doesn't pitch, they look bad. The club doesn't hit, they look bad. Fortunately for us, it's just been the offense, so to speak, that has really struggled lately. Thank goodness the pitching happened. And which do you prefer to struggle? Oh, they must really have the offense. Score. No question. We saw in 05 that with great pitching, you can do magical things. Got a good jump right there. Picks up his second stolen base. It's two straight nights for Iguchi to pick up a bag. He walked in the first inning of last night's contest and stole against Gerald Laird, who came into this season and with a career 41% caught stealing. Well, he's had two terrific jumps. Yeah, there's there's no chance. The pitcher last night, Tejeda, slowed to the plate, and Millwood very Deliberate on that last pitch. Well, that jump last night was a Lance Johnson jump. Good eye. So a full count to Tommy. And for you tuning in for the first time, a Lance Johnson jump is you take off before the pitcher if you ever even moves. You haven't heard Hawk talk about that since 1990. Lance joined this team about 90, 89, somewhere in there. <laughs> and that's ball four. And right now, let's check out our Midas picks to click this evening. Jim Angio, our director of the crew, with Creedy, Robin Aiden, and DJ going with McCoviak. And uh, DJ Jeffers family and I are going to go with Darren Erstad. So one out, two on. And here's Polly. Oh, 
Elliott, 220, a homer, five RBIs. One for three last night. First pitch strike. And if anybody watching in tonight is curious about how the ball carries in weather like this, very well. Nice and batting practice on both sides. We're just launching them way out of here in these cold, frigid conditions. Pretty good pitch to hit right there. Paulie had the right approach, trying to take it into right, right center. And just a, just a smidgen target. No work, 37 games over in his career. 125 up, 88 down. Right there. 71 mile an hour curveball. Oh. Paulie just a little quick. Take a look at this. This is a sign of a team that is not timing the ball very well. Camerco swing was nice, just too quick. Couldn't let it get back to him. Well, you saw the curveball there. Even though it was up, it was still biting. It wasn't a roller. Just foul. Well, Millwood's pretty stubborn. He's deciding to stay with it in anticipation of Kernerko staying out in front of it just like he did. But he sure is getting closer to keeping it fair. I doubt he'll throw another one to him in this situation. Well, good pitchers, a lot of times, after they make a mistake like that and get away with it, they will come back with that same pitch because of the muscle memory. They know exactly what went wrong in the delivery. They knew they were maybe just opened up a little too quick, released it a little too early. Tell you, but you saw the big break on that excellent replay that we just showed you, and how a hitter has to know exactly where that pitch is going to end up to make contact. Can't a little look at Iguchi at second. Well, he just kept Tadahito from getting nailed in the back of the head. It's not the kind of weather you want to take one off the body anywhere, let alone especially the helmet. And your bell rung. Two down. Well, three straight breaking balls, and then Pauly not anticipating a perfect pitch to crush. I can't pull the trigger. Down and in. So here's Jermaine. Jermaine, 0 for 4 last evening. Coach Mark Connor. Now the University of Tennessee. Also a pitching coach with the Yankees. Mark Connor is a good, good pitching coach yeah. and a good guy. Been around quite some time, and you know you got to be a pretty good guy in this business to keep getting jobs. With that little roll reversal there, Art Howe to the on the right of your screen now a coach for Ron Washington who was a coach longtime coach for Art Howe when he was managing for the A's. There's Ron Washington. Everybody in the Texas uniform has had nothing but great things to say about their new manager. They've really enjoyed working with them, these players. Two on, two out. We were taking a lot of time hooking up with Laird. Good eye. Not that Millwood works real slow, but he's not the quickest ever. One thing about him, he doesn't throw a lot of Balls. Generally, he's going to throw strikes. Good 
breaking ball. No one has a when he's right, he really has a good span on his pitches. And by span, I mean inside in, outside out. Does not mess around with the middle of the plate very much. No, and, and we've talked about the cold weather, and there's got to be some difficulty for these pitchers location. <laughs> he strikes out Canerico and die after one, no score. First pitch strike to Mark Teixeira leading off here in the top of the second inning. Sosa on deck and Blaylock in the hole. Teixeira 0 for 3 last night. 10 for 26 lifetime against Burley with a homer. And the count 2 and 1. Good change right there. That little head movement right there. I wish Mark could really incorporate that just a hair more in that changeup. That is just a great movement. He gone. Comes back with a fastball up. Two Sosa. And he two for four last night with that three run homer. Sosa has faced Burley 16 times, has six hits. It was six hits, five of them have stayed in the park. Seen a hitter with more evidence of having everything have to be time perfect to make contact. Hands way out away from his body. That little toe tap. But boy, when he has that timing good, obviously, 591 home runs later, things go well for him. Off the end of the bat, softly hit. Well, And there's only four guys in the history of this game who have more than you do. That's awesome. Yep. 600 home runs. Jim told me he's going to try and get to 500 this year, and that's amazing. Blaylock went for three last evening. He has faced Burley 24 times, and he has two hits. Hey guys, how we doing? Count evens at one. Thank you. They do. Very nice. Really makes. <laughs> Two and one. High in the right field. Deep. JD going back. Jumps and makes the catch. He just missed it. Meanwhile, after an inning and a half, not out. And the Bulls trying to pick up their 50th victory. They're 49 and 32. First pitch to Pierzynski. Lined into center field. Lofton quickly over. Cuts it off. That ball was starched. Really, Gucci hit his ball right on the button. Pierzynski staying on that nicely. 
Beautiful effort right there by A.J. to stay on a pitch away. And he can get himself right by staying right in that location with his front shoulder, driving, toward, driving towards that pitcher. He can get himself right by using that short finish. Short and quick. A lot of times, you know, guys trying to be short and quick, and yet the best way to get there is think about how you're going to finish. You finish that bat behind you with a big old long loop and swing. Or are you going to finish that bat in front of you where you just release the hands, trust your hands, hit it, short and quick. I compare it kind of like my punch shot in golf, you know, you just down through it and stop everything right after contact. Yep. Well, unbelievably, that is a correct analogy. <laughs> well, Hawk, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen me in a couple of years, man. That's right. <laughs> oh, but I'll see you some this summer. You will be most impressed. Thanks to that Mona V. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever magical potion you're taking That's it. to get you back out there. God Every bless. day. One and two the count. The greedy. Watch out. You know, if you if you watch, a lot of people think that the baseball swing and the golf swing are exactly the same, except there's always a curveball lifted out into left field. Jerry Harrison will make the catch. One out. They think the golf swing and the baseball swing are exactly alike in just a different plane, but that is not the case. Unfortunately, for some baseball players, it is. Primarily left-handed hitter. <laughs> no, but if you if you watch a lot of times the great players, especially Tiger. Tiger Tiger is a graphic example of what I'm talking about. When he has to hit a shot. And after this double play, we'll get back to that. Nope. Throws him off the bag. Let's not forget who is. Running down that line too, Makoviak gets down that line from that left side as quick as anybody we have. He digs hard, and on contact, he gets out of the box quickly. He plays hard. This thing just developed really slow, though. You see right there, a soft feed over. Kens are cheating. That little last bounce on Michael Young took his balance away from that toss. Here's your rebate. But if you watch Tiger when he's got to hit a shot, the only thing you'll see him practice in his practice swings is his finish. That's the only thing you'll see. Just his how he wants to finish that with a particular shot. And the same thing holds true with swinging a, a bat. If you want to shorten that swing up, you've got to put a short, short finish on it. You can't get from point A to point B, which point B is the contact with that long looping swing as quickly as you can from point A to point B with a short finish. That's one reason Rod Carew, Hall of Famer, was such an outstanding hitter. Rigger as well. Barrett Hackett's gun has a gun into center field. So that would be a stolen base and an error. Second error of the year for Gerald Laird. Nice jump by McCovey. A quick release. If it's on the money, they've got him. But as you see, it's into the base runner. Forget about it. Kinsler had no chance as it sails into McCovey. Right through the wickets. And into third base he goes. But the Sox being aggressive on the base paths. Pick up their third stolen base in the first two games. And Uribe has a catbird seat. Millwood with an excellent assortment of breaking stuff. A couple of different curveballs. That's ball four. Wow. On Uribe picking up his fourth walk already 
on the year. He just had 13 last season. So he's on pace for 25 or so this year. Pretty good for him. So here's Erstad. He lined one into left center field and had just a little too much height on it. Gave Kenny Lofton a chance to run underneath it. Also, Melwood, more of a two seamer, a pretty good sinkage, and a four seamer. Well, a lot of late movement on that little turned over fastball that two seamer that Hawk was just telling you about it looks like a straight fastball till you swing it where did you pick the ball up what you pick the rotation of the ball up how quickly Oof. on pitches like that just like Erstad right when it was swinging missed time me too if there was if there was one thing that occasionally I would pick up it would be the two seamer. But most of the time, as you say, late after it already moved and after I'd already missed it. Yep. That ball is laced in the center field right at Lofton once again. Fox <laughs> stranded four through two. Lower third of the Ranger order here in the top of the third. Harrison, Cruz, and Laird to face Mark Burley. Just tuning in, Mark has retired everybody he's seen. Takes first pitch strike, does Harrison. Mark also with a couple of strikeouts. He struck out Young and Teixeira. And doesn't think so. Now Jerry Harrison gave everything he has. There's no question about that. But Joe Creedy gave just a little bit more. Take a look at the Panasonic replay as Creedy's going to dive and it's going to lead him right on top of third base. Look how quick he gets up with that ship throw, knowing who's running. And Harrison indeed is out. Good call down at first by James Hoy. And a good call. And a good call over third. And now Kellogg's going to come over to try to get this thing squared up. Well, over at first base, James Hoy ended up throwing Jerry Harrison Jr. out of this ball game. Harrison had almost been all the way back to the dugout. Take a look at this again. Now that's bang bang actually different view. That's not an easy call but it's one of those as a base runner that you definitely want as a hitter. You know as a first base coach you want to make sure that you get in there as quickly as possible and get your player away from the umpire but in that situation Gary Pettis was involved and then Harrison while leaving the field was tossed. So he kept going at that umpire a little too too much. What a play by Creedy. And a beautiful pick by Pauly. Well, you know that is the kind of stuff that a pitcher can just keep him in a groove because of those kinds of plays. I said that ball went right over the bag. It was going to hit in foul territory. Jeff Kellogg right on top of it. Checks it up. Yes, he did. It's been quite the balancing act, real early part of the year for Ron Washington and the Texas Rangers outfield. Got five outfielders, got to try and all get him some playing time. 
Ball off the fist into left field. Russell out there on the track by Nelson Cruz. Two down. Fans for every White Sox home run hit at U.S. Cellular Field, Onacondo.com will make a hundred dollar donation to the Chicago White Sox charities. Now one of the great managers in the history of the game, Earl Weaver from Baltimore, always had four outfielders that played in a hundred games and five infielders that played in a hundred games. Well, I've loved that. I've loved managers that were able to make sure that those guys that weren't his everyday players played enough to where they were ready at any given moment. Something went wrong, he could put them in there and they were going to not hurt him that much. The only difference being is when he had that infield, when he had Robinson and Aparicio, David Johnson, Boog Powell, that fifth infielder didn't get too much play time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may, that may be a little tougher to crack that one. Yeah. And you understand it. But he always had John Lowenstein and Gary Renicki. Tandem out there, Lowenstein a left hand hitter, Renicky a right hand hitter. And they everybody in that club knew their roles, and that's one of the big things, DJ. You played in enough clubs, you played for enough managers, because there was a strike. Three and two the count to Laird. That's one of the critical points of managing is making sure everybody knows what their job is and then letting them do it. Change up to Hopper. Nine up, nine down, thanks to a great play by Creedy. Matt Keita. The new left fielder. Tadahito Aguchi will lead it off. It's lined a sharp single in the left field. Takes ball one. There's a strike. Tommy on deck, and Erico in the hole. Well, you said a little while ago, Hoff Millwood pretty much throws a plethora of pitches. He'll cut his fastball, he'll sink it. He'll throw it straight. Also has that big, slow curveball and the changeup. So he's the kind of guy where you better pick a pitch and adjust to the others, but when he get that pitch you're looking for, hit it hard. But foul. You do not, if you're looking for the fastball, want to foul it off. Well, I was in the past of talking with scouts when he was when Millwood was in Atlanta, and for a lot of those scouts that I talked to, they said he was the best pitcher on that staff. And that's saying something with the staff they had. Yeah, I found it interesting that they moved him. He did a nice job while pitching for the Phillies before joining Cleveland. Payoff. In the right field. And folks, let's take a look right now at our Kawasaki Let the Good Times Roll graphic. Jim Tomey is definitely on the roll. See in the last seven games, he's reached base quite a few times. 17 to be exact. Here the walk and hit has a couple of homers and three RBIs. The average at 474 during that stretch. Go get him, Jimmy. <laughs> Way back. Cruz looks up. You can put it on the board. Yes. yes. That he looked for his pitch, got it, and hit it. That's what you just mentioned, the previous hitter, Gucci. You look for the fastball, and then when you get it, you can't afford to miss it. Yeah. Jimmy indeed has been sitting on some fastballs lately, and he squared a few of them up. Third home run over the last week for him. Well, he takes ball one. That's the thing about getting after good pitches. Good pitchers, I should say. 
Because when you get a good pitch to hit, you just cannot afford to miss it. As a count, two and zero. Oh. Of course, with that home run by Tony, the Alex Nellis family will donate $100 to White Sox charities for every Sox homer hit throughout the course of the season. And that was number 13, so $1,300 donated by Alex Nellis in loving memory of Ursa. Very easy. And you and I, we sit up here. We know these guys are supposed to hit that fastball as Paulie was looking for it there. Had a good aggressive swing. But how frustrating it is when you're just a little bit off in your timing. And even though you know it's on its way, you swing at it, you still can't square it up. Nice. In the right field, Cruz. Two down. Well, one of the biggest signs that a hitter has to fight. Especially home run hitters. One of the worst feelings they can have is when they, in their own mind they know they're having trouble getting to the fastball. Oh yeah. Conversely, when you know you can get to that fastball, you're gonna do some damage. One thing that I recall of being able to trust my hands and get to the fastball is you didn't cheat, you just saw the baseball and reacted. That's the thing. Well, you have that's what they call a wheelhouse. A wheelhouse is, is, is for some of you who are familiar with that term, new Sox fans or new baseball fans. That's a spot, your sweet spot. To whereas that's more of a reactionary type spot. In other words, when that ball gets in that, because there's a ball hit hard. Kensler sucks it up. But the long home run, the towering home run by Tommy, and it is one nothing good guys. Top of the order here in the top of the fourth for the Rangers, Lofton, Kensler, and Young to face Mark Burley. Grady in on the grass at third, pitch just off the outside corner. A little chopper foul, but getting back to the wheelhouse, that is the, the guy's sweet spot. He just reacts when that pitch gets in that zone. And you don't have to think about anything because it's a reaction. But as DJ was just talking about, well, that is laced and foul, just foul. Thank you very much. Is it when you get strikes that are not in your sweet spot, then that's what you have to work on in BP and, and, and try to build a swing. Whereas, but the key is there is trusting your hands. When a hitter doesn't trust his hands, you know he is not swinging the bat well. No, and that's a much bad, easier said than done. Well, yeah, it's a bad feeling, but you can still get your job done when you don't trust your hands. He gone. Mark just missed Kenny Lofton with the pitch prior to this. He goes right back in there, ties him up off the inside part of the plate. Kenny thought he can get to that one, just tipped it. Krasinski holds on to it. Nice location. Here's Kinsley. Hit one off the end of the bat into center field. Yeah, but there are times where you're not locked in. You don't trust your hands 100%, yet you make some adjustment and do something a little different and still get your hits. Well, you're giving up as that's out of play. Well, so I'm, I'm talking about more, from a, more of a home run in the context we were in, home run hitting thing. If you're going to do that, then you're going to give up the opportunity. You're not going to hit as many home runs until you come out of it. Exactly. And that's when you make the adjustments. If you're a right-handed hitter, you start hitting the ball line drives or trying to over the second baseman head. All right, back through the middle. I think Brian Anderson said it well last year. He started accepting hits. Hit him out in front on that changeup. Good motion he's got going for him tonight is now. Darren taking charge as he should. You have to be able to accept just base hits sometimes, even if you do have power. Home run swing is not going to be there all the time. Otherwise, you guys would have 150 home runs a year. So you have to be able to 
at times say, I've got to take a base hit right here. Unless somebody like yourself walks up there trying to hit 150 home runs and just get some hits along the way. Yeah. Quick inning. Quick inning for Burley. And he leads it one nothing. A.J. Pierzynski, he just laced one hard into center field. A little bit towards left center for a single. Two for three last night. Just thinking in between innings, watching Millwood warm up. He probably has as big an assortment of pitches and can get them over as anybody, certainly in this league, and probably in all of baseball. You know, it's interesting you say that because Kevin Millwood, a lot like last night's starter Tejeda, has three different fastballs, which means you have to count that as three different pitches. So yeah, he has an overabundance of pitches to use, and he can throw them. He's a guy that can attack you any which way he wants to. Hit him on the fist, Nelson Cruz. Thirteen game Aussie plans are on sale now. The Aussie plan allows you to pick the games that fit your schedule with prices starting as low as seven dollars per game. Purchase your Aussie plan today at WhiteSox.com or for information on other season ticket plans, call 312 674 1000. Joe Creedy went out to left field. Kevin Millwood, 37 games over 500 in his career. Not bad. 125 wins, 88 losses. Well, he's doing something right, that's for sure. He certainly is getting paid well for it. Close pitch didn't get it. And the count two and one. Millwood's biggest win season came in '99. He was 18 and seven. And 18 and 8 with Atlanta in 2002. Backhanded by Young, Plants, Pegs. Sometimes it just seems like it's very hard to find the hole. It starts out like, all right, I've got a base hit. Once you make contact as a hitter, you see where it's going. Shortstop's got a long way to go, and then all of a sudden, he gets there and makes it look easy. How about when you're in that streak that everything you hit finds a hole? What are those? <laughs> They're few and far <laughs> between from the one you mentioned. <laughs> That's down low to Makoviak. I don't recall ever having one of those, Hawk. <laughs> Where everything finds a hole. I had one for one game one time. <laughs> <laughs> there are some guys that have a career like that. Great feeling, I'll tell you. Saw Tony Gwynn close and personal for several years. So like every time he hit a ground ball, it was either up the middle or in the hole at short. And you're like, how can that be? Just three, four times a day, it seemed like no problem for him to find that hole. Two out and a one-two count to Rob. Funny thing about Tony though was later in his career they pitched him in tight. He decided to forget the bouncers up the middle in the hole. Started turning on everybody and became more dangerous. And we're trying to backdoor him. Occasionally, Kevin Miller will give, will give you the impression he's just out there almost toying with guys. Yes. We go to the fifth. It is one nothing stop. Top 
Top of the fifth inning, one to nothing. Sox on top. That one coming from a long blast off of the bat of Jim Tomey, his fourth home run of the year. That was in the third inning. Mark Teixeira, strikeout victim in his only at bat. It's one and one. Burley has retired all 12 that he has seen in this ball game. Thank goodness for Joe Creedy at third. Otherwise, it'd be a different story. A nice little one hopper out to Iguchi for a quick out. This year, when you can't be home to see the White Sox, check out MLB.tv. You can log on to the internet to watch every out of market White Sox game of the season live. For more details, visit WhiteSox.com, where baseball is always on. You know by the booze who's standing in. Change up down for a ball. Sammy hit a little ground ball out to Iguchi and his only at bat. Mark getting it and throwing it as you would anticipate. Ties him up good pitch. back out. Burley, 50 pitches tossed up there. Been very efficient. That pitch taken down, three and one. First base run of the ball game for the Texas Rangers. That'll bring up Blaylock. Hank Blaylock, thank goodness, just missed one in his only at bat. High, high, deep, deep. And Jermaine Dye had to go back and catch it right at the top of the fence. Big swing, coming up empty. Take a look at this swing by Blaylock. You don't see the swing, but you see the finish. Right there, that ball would have been out of here. Big 6-5, Jermaine Dye made it look easy. Laylock has not enjoyed hitting against Burley in his career. He's just two for 25. Off to a slow start. Has 13 strikeouts through 12 games, just a couple of walks. Burley got it! Sammy Sosa becomes victim number 48 in Mark Burley's career. And it's just not good when you're not stealing a base to be picked off. And Sammy not stealing here. There you see it. The Toyota Robo Replay. Plenty of time. So two down with a one-two count on Blaylock. Boy, that is just a uh, good move. It's embarrassing, too. That's a good move when you have a guy standing there looking at you and still can't tell you're coming right at him. That ball's hit hard to the left of Gucci. Nice diving stop and the throw on the money from Mark Burley. Through five, he's faced the minimum, has a one-to-nothing lead. Uribe starts things off here in the bottom half of the fifth inning against Kevin Millwood. First pitch, fastball high to Juan, who drew a walk in the second inning. Uribe been pretty consistent with that bat since the start of the season. A little cool lately, but he still looks pretty good standing up there even when he's taking pitches. At the three home runs and nine driven in. High into right field. Cruz. One down. White Sox individual game tickets are on sale now. Tickets are still available to see the White Sox play the Detroit Tigers and the LA Angels of Anaheim between April 25th and the 29th. For tickets, call 866 Sox Game or visit WhiteSox.com. 
Darren Erstad. He's gone out to Lofton twice. Hard. Last time up, he really hit it hard. Mel Woods, 91 mile an hour fastball tailing off the corner. Oh, here's a guy sitting 163 as he stands up to the dish, and I am just so happy he's here. <laughs> Tell you, you would never know by watching his actions that he was not hitting 363. Now he's going to be a Wood, barring injury, a tremendous asset to this ball club. First dad batting leadoff, if you hadn't heard, Scott Pesednik went down with a injury on the day off Monday. The chopper out of the reach of Millwood. He knows he's got a second baseman there. He'll make that play for him two down. Talking about Scott Pesednik. Scotty placed on a 15 day DL. End up the strain. Doing some exercises here on the off day on his own. Pulled up lame to see his numbers before he went down. Has nothing to do with that hernia surgery that took place in January. A bit of a shakeup for the Sox offensive attack. Iguchi. Tadahito picks up his second hit of this ball game. Well, the big thing about that is this walking up to home plate. Tadahito. That swing getting a little bit shorter. We talked about that a little bit earlier about that finish. It's a very compact finish after contact. Jim Tomey had a pretty compact finish after last time up. Short, sweet, and fall. Kept the bat in front of him. And he's reached base twice. Also walked in the first. You missed it. Have a look. Strike one and one. Millwood trying to make a bit of an adjustment out there. As Iguchi already has one stolen base in this ballgame. They have two against him on the night. Rob McCoviak swiped a bag in the second. Trying to be a little quicker to the plate because of it. That ball tailing down and away and missing. They have the shift on Jimmy Kinsler out in short right field. Michael Young playing up the middle on second base side of things. Outfield plays straight up, deep and right. Be three and one. Sox appear to be a bit more aggressive, if you ask me, against Millwood tonight than they have been in the past couple of games offensively. Let's swing the bats with some gusto. That'll be ball four, so Jimmy has reached base all three times this evening. Two aboard for Conurco. Polly's getting closer. He's not that far away. And it looks like Tommy certainly is closing the gap on. It's a process. There's no question about it. And unfortunately, it's almost like a virus. You've got to go through it. When it's collectively like it's been on our club. And last night, Pauly, he was one for three. The one he had hit a bullet down in the left field. That was a good at bat. Yeah. The swing was nice. It was short and compact, what we've been talking about tonight. That's our theme for the evening. Short and sweet. And the difference being for you youngsters out there, when you're short and sweet, you can stay back longer. Now, the longer you can stay back, the longer you see it. The longer you see it, the more you're going to hit it. You know, Woods pitch just stays inside. He's got a little slider he'll throw. It spins, doesn't do much. It's called a backup slider. You see some right handed hitters back off real quick. It really doesn't do much. Kind of just stays on that inside corner. They thought it was going to run in on them. There it was again. Doing much with that pitch. And it's 2-0. Oh. Paulie, he's going to try and keyhole one right here. 
and lay into it. 77 pitches for Millwood here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Keyhole means he is going to look for it in such a small, tiny, minute area. And if it's there, he'll take his best swing. And it wasn't there, so it's three and up. Turning loose right here, Al. Wally looking down at third base coach. Raise and shine, too. In my opinion, looked like he gave him a swing away sign indeed. Pitching coach on his way out to talk to Millwood. Second time this evening he's had to go out and talk to his big right hander. And Millwood, four walks in this ball game now, three strikeouts, along with four hits he's allowed. I mentioned Scott Pesetnik going on the disabled list. They called up Boone Logan from AAA. Skipper felt getting an extra arm right now in that bullpen was going to be a little more advantageous to his team and giving Rob McCoviak and Centron and Ozuna some extra at bats would uh, also be nice for them at this stretch where he's going to be on the DL with Pesetti. Five career grand slams for Jermaine. He's looking for a big hit situation for him to come through. That pitch just stays inside. Didn't miss by much. Well, that's just a big pitch. It's always the first pitch in a sequence of this nature, especially when you got a guy struggling. Don't think about it. Don't take a Rolls Royce long to get warm. Two and zero. Oh. Millwood being very cautious with these dangerous White Sox hitters and got himself in a big, big jam. It's a Gucci, Tommy, and Canerco on those bases. Jermaine Dye. Can't outthink himself here. Just look for a fastball and his spot to lay into. That's his spot. It was down the way, and it's ball three. Millwood does not appear to be real pleased with home plate umpire Eric Cooper's strike zone. Cooper tonight has been very consistent with it. Not a situation where you want to swing with the bases loaded and a 3 0 count. You've got two more that he's got to lay right there for you. He went after a pitcher's pitch, 3 and 1, and it's going to end up in the seats full count. Not the swing you want to take on that situation. Jermaine very fortunate to have another one left. Runners will be off. And the same pitch, same result. A base hit by Jermaine Dye here to really spark his slow start. Hitting at 200 right now has two homers, six driven in. Old chopper down to third base, foul. One plate umpire Eric Cooper puts the arms up. It's his call, and we'll try it again. See right here on the replay that Blaylock's going to come up and play this. In front of the bag, it's not the third up, third base umpire's call at that point. Now Jermaine has had three straight swings, none of them real good. Now sometimes, you know, when you got a big, it's important how hard the ball's hit. In this case, you got a big man up there at the plate, and if he hits a hard one down there to third, sometimes home plate umpire can't see it because he's being a right-handed hitter. Vice versa, left-handed hitter going down first. One more time for J.D. as 
Millwood is really making some nice pitches, sinking that pitch and having it beat straight down. The best pitch that he has seen to hit was on the 3 0 where JD took it. Yeah, but you said it right because he's got to come back with another one and another. Here we go. Chop down to third foul once again. Five straight foul balls from Dunn. Millwood is really battling out there, making good pitches. You'd think if you're Jermaine Dye, sooner or later he's got to make a mistake. It just hasn't happened yet. Right back at us. And as you heard, we've got these windows closed in front of us because the weather is so frigid to say the least. No souvenir up here in the booth. Once again, after six foul balls, Millwood will try and get Jermaine Dye. It's hit hard in the left field. Going back and looking up as Harris did. It is gone! It doesn't take a Rolls Royce long to get warm. into the White Sox bullpen, his sixth career Grand Slam. It is five to nothing. All this with two outs. A.J. Pierzynski hits it high. He hits it deep in the left center field, going back is Lofton. He'll drop the ball right in front of the warning track. Pierzynski thought the play was made. Will cruise into second base. An error on Lofton. You don't see that very often from this man right here. No, you do not. That is not an unfamiliar type of catch for Kenny Lofton. He's caught many a ball down low like that. Cold, frigid night. Got all the way over there. Maybe the eyes watering just a little bit and couldn't focus. And came up empty. Joe Creedy will take one right there. So the Sox. Uribe starts the inning off. Flies out to right field. Erstad grounded out to second. Base hit Iguchi. Walk, walk. And Granny for die. Quickly, 0 and 2. Take another look at Jermaine Dye winning the battle. You could have hung out all the drawers in Cook County on this one. You talking about a P. Oh. Keita out there in left field, actually. Harrison had been ejected. No chance for him to get back. Just had to look up and see the results. A little slap shot out to Young at shortstop. The fire across the infield. A lot of damage done. All of it with two outs. And time right now to take a look at our uh, flag That's trivia fine. question. And it's answered. What Rangers player had 200 hits but batting average under 300 back in 79? That's Funny Bell. Yes, indeed, he's Sweetie Petey. Hawk, you were right. But he had over 2,500 hits. Not that year. But that year he had over 200. What a player he was, an outstanding third baseman and a gamer. I mean, he would compete with him. First pitch strike to number seven hitter. Matt Keita stands in. And there for Harrison, he got ejected after being thrown out at first base. A little bouncer foul. Take another look at this close play earlier. Freedy made a great diving stop at third. Got up, got rid of it quickly. It was bang, bang play at first base. Could have gone either way. And his reaction, he thought he was safe. 
and ended up being tossed as he was heading back to the dugout after arguing. You see Gary pointed saying I was all the way over there. It's a one and two count to Kata. On deck, Cruz. Change up, down. Two and two. Now Mark right here has got to treat it still like it's a one nothing or a nothing nothing ball game. Forget about that five run lead he's got and compete like he has been through the first five innings. He heard you. One down. That's a fourth strike out of the ball game for Burley. He has faced the minimum all the way through here into the sixth inning with one down. A nice little change up. Cruz stands in. Got good power. That jam last time up and muscled it well into left field, almost in front of the warning track. He's got a count. There's a strike. So Mark Burley has allowed one base runner in this ball game in the fifth inning with one out. He walked Sammy Sosa and then picked him off. That ball's hit hard out to Jermaine Dye. Two down. U.S. Cellular presents Win a Jersey Wednesdays. That's every Wednesday home game. That was today. Fans can win one of 15 jerseys autographed by White Sox players and coaches. Tickets are still available for April 25th when the Sox play the Tigers. Gerald Laird rounded down to shortstop and is only at bat. Makes a breaking ball strike. One and one. Burley in his last down, he threw the ball extremely well. He had three runs against the A's. Those three runs came on three doubles in the first inning. The next six, six innings, he shut them down completely. And of those three doubles, only one of them was hit hard. They were just very fortunate, those A's, that inning. Yeah. Inside corner ace. Two strikeouts in the inning for Burley. He leads it five to nothing. Five to nothing ball game here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. And a pitching change for the Rangers. C.J. Wilson on for the fourth time this year. 736, that's his earned run average in three and two-thirds innings. Pose had three, three hits and 15 at-bats against him. Wilson, pretty good fastball, about 93 or so, and a curveball. First man he's going to face is Rob McCoviak, who's 0 for 2, does have a stolen base. That was when he reached on a fielder's choice in the second. Fastball off the outside corner, 1-0. and Mentioned Makoviak gets some extra at-bats right now with Scott Pesednik down. Opportunity for the skipper. It is bench guy, some more action. Pitch right on his knuckles. And Jared Lair to come back, make the grab, one out. Go ahead right now and check out the Feldco White Sox upcoming schedule. Next five ball games. Close out this three game series right over Comcast Sportsnet at 7 11 tomorrow. Then head on to Detroit for a three game series, followed up by a two game set against the Royals. Royals who beat Detroit today 4 3. Royals, they're going to beat up on a lot of teams. To have some good days because they've got some offense. Outside of a couple of blowouts that they've been involved in, they have been competitive in almost every game. Yeah, they're, they're going to score some runs. They're, they're a four and eleven. Pretty decent offensive team, especially with that Alex Gordon in their lineup now. Tian really came around last year. They're going to surprise some people with their offense. It's a one and one count to Uribe. Two and one. 
on to a walk back in the second inning. That's the fourth of the year for him. Make that sound like a big deal because it is. And here we mentioned at that point he just had 13 free passes last season. He's on the verge of another one at three and one. out to Cruz in right field two down back to the top of the order with Darren Erstad Erstad tonight is 0 for 3 but he's hit a couple balls hard out to center field last time up at chopper and the fifth inning out to second base there was a second out of that fifth before things got hot for the Sox Gucci's base hit the walk to Tommy, the walk to Canerco, and then Jermaine Dye after fouling off seven pitches. He didn't see it. He won the battle with a grand slam. That ball is lifted in the left field. Kata's out there. C.J. Wilson comes on, throws the ball extremely well for the Rangers. Exactly a five hit. Kenny Lofton to start things off here in the seventh. First pitch, foul straight up and back into the seats. Mark Burley has faced the minimum through six innings. The only base runner in the fifth was Sammy Sosa. He drew a walk, and then Mark Burley promptly picked him off. That's the 48th time in Burley's career he has picked a base runner. So a foul down quickly Owen to. Burley and Pierzynski have just been in a tremendous rhythm all night long. 72 pitches he's thrown. One walk five punch outs. <laughs> hit hard. Two hopper for Pauly. And a nice quick out here in the seventh. That brings up the second baseman Ian Kinsler. Kinsler's fly to center field twice. The reigning American League player of the week is Kinsler. Last night the bomb out of here. Three run blast. That was in the seventh inning against John Garland. There's a strike. See right there, he's homered in five of the last six games. To Chopper, and that's going to be a foul. Kinsler, the 17th round draft choice for these Texas Rangers a few years back. On deck, Michael Young. Mounted to the left of Creedy. He can't come up with it. Long throw for your rebound. Picked by Paulie. Boy, Grady with earlier in the ball game, if you miss it, a beautiful play. Watch this play right here by Wani, how quick. Wani can get rid of the ball just about as quick as any shortstop in the American League. I'm talking about him with some giddy up on it. Flat foot, long throw, nice job. As the first pitch to Michael Young is taken for a ball. Michael Young, pretty good. Lifetime 300 hitter coming into this season. One time American League batting champion a couple of years ago. And he's had four straight years where he's had 200 or more hits. Dean Benoit is up. There's a pitch taken in, two and one. Michael Young, an interesting family history. He's had some professional boxers in his 
family, some cousins. That's off into the seats. One of his cousins, Zach Padilla, is a WBA junior welterweight champion. Back in 94 and 5. The 2 2. Up and in. The payoff. The ball's hit hard into left center field, but Rob McCoviak seems to have the track on it and does. Makes the grab to Mark Burley. Seven innings. He's faced a minimum. And taking a look at the Comcast Sportsnet game summary, it has been a, a nice ball game for the Sox this evening if you're just tuning in late. Mark Burley, as you see, he has been getting it done. He has faced the minimum through his seven innings worth of work. Big grand slam by Jermaine Dye. And Joaquin Benoit is now the new pitcher for the Rangers. It's been in five games, he's throwing it well. Has a 193 earned run average, just four hits in his 18 at bats against it. Tad. Tad Gucci stands in. He's reached base a couple of times. Two singles. Has a stolen base and a run score. They say Benoit's changeup has been unhittable. He's got a pretty good fastball. You see it right there at 92 miles an hour. Oh, he's got a good arm. Joaquin Benoit. Ball hit to a drawn in uh, Laylock. One down. And time right now for the Giordano's delivery of the game. Jim Tolman. Ouch. That hurt. Jimmy's 300. Excuse me, 476 home run in his career. Takes a fastball right down the middle. 0 and 1. Jim Tomey mentioned that home run earlier. 476 now in his career. Places him alone at 24th all time. Balls hit high in the right field. Going back and looking up his cruise. He'll look up and out of his reach. Jim Tomey, second homer of the night. It is now six to nothing. Congratulations as the changeup. Hawk was just telling you about it. That one left up and out. Cruz runs out of room. Hawley takes a fastball right there. 0 and 1. Hawley's 0 for 2. He drew a walk in the fifth inning and scored ahead of the granny by Jermaine Dye. Six hits, six runs for the Sox tonight. Three home runs. There's the change taken down. As a rule, if a youngster, especially a young guy, not too much time in the big leagues, throws a high change up and gets you hit out of here, the next one's going to be down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to make sure of that. That is for sure. Benoit has been up and down with these Rangers the past few years now. Well, he made his first major league start against us. I recall that. The talent 
good arm. Control got him in some problems. Falling behind in counts. Well, yeah, he was basically a 2 3 1 pitcher at that point. Now they're using him in this role out of the bullpen. Build up some confidence, some experience, and see where it takes him. Pauly checks it up on the hard breaking slider. No swing. Cubs were trailing big down in Atlanta. Now 6-5 Cubs. Pauly with a 2-2 count. Plays Paul is straight. He's down the line from later. Two down. Sox trying to snap a three game losing streak. Themselves back on track. Skipper Oz again has to still be pleased. With what's gone on this part of the season, considering there's been no offensive attack yet. And just two games under 500 at 5 and 7. Came in with a nice 3.92 earned run average to the pitching staff. Ryder misses in time right now to take a look at our Dodge drive of the game. Jermaine Dodge, bases juiced. Kevin Millwood. He lost a very, very exciting battle with Millwood. After strike after strike after strike until Guy made contact there. Making strikes there. It's a nice little slider for a strike from Benoit. One two count, two down here in the Bottom of the seventh inning. Cox adding a run. And solo shot by Tony. That's a little squibber back to Benoit. Cox offense tonight. They've used the long ball. Share here in the eighth inning. Change up, well outside, two balls in the start. Mark is throwing 87 pitches in this ball game. Just tuning in, Sox with one in the third. That was Tommy. Solo shot, four in the fifth. That was a grand slam by Jermaine Dye. Sox won bottom of the seventh. There's another solo shot by Tommy. So Tommy, five home runs. And the 2 2 pitch. He gone. Aced him on the outside corner. And if you're just tuning in, some of the highlights of Mark Burley. He has six strikeouts. As Sosa. Who has been the only base runner for the Rangers this evening? He walked back in the fifth inning and then Mark picked him off. Well, they won the count. Mark Burley now the 39th time in his career where he's had a stretch of at least retiring 10 in a row. Get in his last outing against the A's. 10 straight battles retired. And the 2 1 pitch to Sosa. A little flipper. Aguchi is there off the fist. Two down. Defensive change into left field. Brian Anderson. To Rob McCovia. So here's Blaylock. 
He's gone out deep to right field. Jermaine Dye had to go up to get it. Is that off the fist? Oh, the play right there. <laughs> Holy mercy. I like it. Not anticipating anything other than it's a fair ball. You can't get it to anything. Him. Right. Giving it to his pitcher and saying, hey, I'm not going to worry about it from there. Ball very close. And Paul said it's not worth waiting and finding out and being wrong. Now ball softly hit to Aguchi. Another one, two, three inning for Burley. Got the Southwest tail of the tape. New pitcher for the Rangers, Eric Gagne. He's been in one game. What new? He didn't give up anything. First pitch to Brzezinski. Hit into center field. Now, well, one thing about Gagne. Watching him on television when he was in that Dodger uniform. Probably in the last. I don't know. 15, 20, 25 years, maybe even more than that, it was as unhittable as any pitcher you ever want to see on watching on TV. Yeah, that's when he was throwing probably about 96, 97, maybe even higher than that. With some of the wickedest, nastiest off speed stuff you've ever seen. Radio for three, and the count of one, two. Yeah, on TV, I mean, you know, you've seen Pedro when he looked. And when he was on top of this game, Randy Johnson, guys like that. But this guy right here was as tough as anybody, again, watching him on TV. You just saw that graphic. 84 consecutive saves for Gagne. It's a major league record. At that time, there were people that were saying, former players were coming out saying, yeah, it's just one any worth of work. Yeah, well, okay. Whatever the standard is at this time is all that matters. He got it done for 84. He was asked to get it done. He did it. Now I feel straight up, spread out. And there's a base hit. Reached out, just flips it out over the head of Michael Young. Uh, Joe Creedy will take that right now, that's for sure. He's been battling, battling, battling. And just to throw it out there and get yourself a hit. Creepy learned this a couple of years back. And it's worked to his advantage, being able to just throw that back at this little screw changeup by Gagne. And he hits it solid, as you saw. Line drive into left field. Brian Anderson's going to get his first at bat in this ball game, a defensive replacement in the last half inning. Big swing coming up empty was Bryant. Rob was 0 for 3 in this ball game. count the ball a strike and now out here in the bottom of the eight six seven and oh for our Sox. no runs no hits two errors for the Rangers Rangers will have Tatum Cruz and Laird the schedule hitters in the top of the ninth Straight up, spread out. Two and two, the count. Twenty-five thousand three hundred ninety, and they have seen something special. Through seven and a half innings. There have been plenty of offense for the Sox, something they've needed to, for quite some time. Three home runs, the six runs. Full count to Bryant. Pitching's been pretty good, too.
just foul. Ryan Anderson shaking his head, realizing that was probably the one chance he was going to have to hit one hard, and unfortunately he did it, but foul. Just eight at bats on the year for him coming into this at bat. One hit. Check out our Comcast Sportsnet tail of the tape. 6 7 0 for our Sox. No runs, no hits, two errors here in the top of the ninth inning. Sox, 15 no hitters in team history. Wilson Alvarez, the last one, 91 at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore. Matt Cata, been to the plate one time and struck out. Nelson Cruz on deck. Gerald Laird in the hole. And the count of one two. If you're just joining us, only one Texas base runner. That was Sammy Sosa back in the fifth. He walked and then was picked off. Strikeouts for Berlin. Cruz has gone out to left and lined hard to Jermaine Die in right. Another changer. Owen two.
Rangers. Take one more look at the last out. Breaking ball coming in, a beautiful pitch. But the pitch that really was working for Burley tonight was the changeup. He had a great motion with it, kept him down. Congratulations to Mark Burrow. Early and right now, let's go down to Josh Morrow, who's got Mark. The guys, thanks very much. Mark, can you believe what you just did? No, what just happened? <laughs> I never knew in a million years this happened. Uh, you get so close, it's so tough to get to a full lineup like that. Uh, but I mean, they got some great hitters. And That's the best part of it, right? I wish I'd get some of my mouth though, but uh, <laughs> no, but going to get into a big league lineup three times uh, and trying to get it by out, it's, it's pretty impossible to do. Uh, I can't believe I did it. At what point did you realize this was happening or that you had a possibility? Well, you always do. I mean, you know, first couple innings, but as the game goes on, I was telling guys, hey, I got no hitter going. Who cares? Y'all don't, don't run from me. Come over and talk to me. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be that guy where the camera's always on me, and so I go on the inside and just kind of stay away from everything. I saw you joking with the guys between the eighth and the ninth, so I knew that you knew what was going on. You also had some spectacular defense going back to Jermaine Dice catching the second inning uh, just to start us. Well, I mean, I, I, obviously, uh, for a guy like me, I need I need uh, defense behind me because, you know, I, they're going to put the ball in play. I don't strike that many guys, so uh, for the defense to do what they did, and I even last eighth inning, I looked over Canerco, and he was, I think he was more nervous than I was, but. Uh, it, it's just amazing. Have you ever thrown one before at any level? Uh, I was a part of one in high school. I think I threw two or three innings, but uh, this obviously this is the first time I've ever done it at any level above, uh, above high school. You know, and for you going back to the Oakland game last week, you retired the last ten men you faced that night. So, you know, the walk to Sammy in the fifth. Otherwise, it's 37 up and 37 down. Perfect game would have been nice too, but uh, no hitter. I mean, I, I can't argue with that. Well, congratulations! A special moment for all of us. Thank you. Okay, Mark Burley throws a no-hitter, the first of his major league career. Guys, let's go upstairs to you. Guys, thank you very much. And a lot of love, as I mentioned, one of the best-liked players by his teammates in White Sox history. A first, a first for him. And once again, the final score. Sox win it six to nothing. And our Chevrolet player of the game, guess who? 28 year old Southpaw. Mark Burley, first career no hitter against one of the best hitting teams 
in all of baseball, your Chevrolet player of the game. So for DJ, Darren Jackson, for our Hall of Fame director, Jim Angio, for our producer, Mike Leary, our associate producer, Dave Ross, also for the mayor, Mean Joe Cruz. Up here in the booth with us, Tom Hoover, Ranking Model, this is the Hawk Ken Harrelson. Congratulations, Mark Burley. <laughs>